Have you ever looked up at those long lines running across the countryside or city and wondered what exactly are these overhead lines made of? What keeps them strong enough to stand tall during storms and what makes them reliable enough to deliver electricity day and night? Well, today we are diving deep into the main components of overhead transmission and distribution lines. And by the end of this video, you'll have a clear idea about how these structures are built, what parts they include, and why each of these components is critically important. Let's begin with the most essential part of an overhead line, the conductors. These are the lifelines of any transmission system. They carry electric power from the generating stations to the end users, homes, industries, and businesses. Conductors need to have low resistance, high conductivity, and enough mechanical strength to withstand not just the electrical load, but also external forces like wind, rain, and even ice. Typically, materials like aluminum or its alloys are used, sometimes reinforced with steel for extra strength. Now here's a question for you. Which conductor do you think is more efficient for long-distance transmission, ACSR or AAAC? Let me know your answer in the comments. Moving on to the supports. These are the physical structures that hold the conductors above the ground, usually in the form of poles or towers. Supports are designed to maintain the conductors at a safe height from the ground to avoid any contact with people or vehicles and to ensure minimum sag. The choice between using poles or towers depends on the voltage level and the distance of transmission. For lower voltage lines, poles made of wood, concrete or steel are commonly used. For higher voltages and longer distances, steel lattice towers are the go-to option. And here's something interesting. In hilly areas, special kinds of towers are used to handle the terrain. If you've ever spotted them, share your experience in the comments. Now, to maintain proper electrical insulation between the conductors and the supports, we need insulators. Insulators are fixed to the supports and the conductors are then attached to these insulators. They ensure that the high voltage does not leak to the metal structures of the towers or poles. These insulators are generally made of porcelain, glass or polymer materials. You may have noticed the disc-like shapes hanging from transmission towers. Yes, those are disc insulators used in suspension type fittings. Imagine a 400 kV line. The number of discs used can be as many as 20 or more in a single string. Isn't that fascinating? Next comes the cross arms. These are horizontal members attached to the support structures. They provide mounting space for the insulators and therefore indirectly support the conductors. Cross arms must be strong enough to withstand the weight of the insulators and the pulling force of the conductors. The material is usually galvanized steel or wood. Without cross arms, the insulators wouldn't have a place to be fixed and the entire structure would be unstable. And finally, we come to the miscellaneous items, small but incredibly important components that ensure safety and stability. These include items like phase plates to indicate the phase conductors, danger plates warning people about high voltage, anti-climbing devices like barbed wires, and lightning arresters that protect the system during a lightning strike. These components may seem minor, but they play a major role in ensuring that the overhead line operates smoothly and safely under all weather conditions. So, these were the five major components that make up an overhead line. Conductors, supports, insulators, cross arms, and miscellaneous items. All of them are chosen and designed carefully to ensure maximum efficiency, reliability, and safety of power transmission. Before we wrap up, let me ask you something. Which one do you think plays the most critical role in ensuring uninterrupted power delivery? Drop your thoughts in the comment section and let's see what everyone thinks. If you found this explanation useful, please don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends who are studying or working in electrical engineering. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Also, if you truly appreciate our efforts and want to support this channel further, do consider clicking on the thanks button below this video. Your contribution really helps us in continuing to create such quality content. And for even more exclusive content, behind the scenes updates and early access to videos, you can now become a part of our YouTube community by hitting the join button. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video where we continue our journey into the fascinating world of electrical power systems. Until then, stay curious and stay connected.